Hi, Haley. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy I'm Friday. We Happy Friday, everyone. We were on FaceTime to like a minute ago, so. We are basically always connected. You know, it's funny, though, because this morning I was eating breakfast and I like laughed at something Dan said, but I looked down at my phone at the same time and he's like, what? Are you like texting with Alex? What did he say? And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm laughing at you, but. I'm very He just funny. knows we have this thing. He does. Hi, Dan. He's watching. Yeah. From downstairs? From downstairs, yeah. Hi, um. So, hey, everyone. Um, we're so glad to have folks joining us. Um, we really have something special at the end of this, so stick around, and we uh, have a, a really nice discount code coming your way, if you can hang on to the end. Uh, but today, we're going to be talking about different uh, ways of casting on, specifically some of the signature ways that we utilize cast ons on some of our favorite third pieces. So if third piece, we really focus on two cast ons um, for most of our projects. And uh, so today we're gonna be covering the long tail cast on, the crochet cast on, and then we're gonna talk about how you can use the crochet cast on as what's called a provisional cast on at the very end. Yeah? Yeah. So it looks like folks are coming in. Now the first step to any cast on is a slip knot. So I'm going to show you the long tail cast on first. I have a ridiculous size 50 needle today, <laughs> which um, is always fun to work with, but it's actually really fun in our soft chunky yarn. Um, it like, it makes really nice homewares. It's fun for a blanket. It's just creates a really beautiful open stitch that a and lot it's of quick. Like. It's so quick. Oh my gosh. You'll be able to see just now. So, um, the first thing uh, that you need for a long tail cast on is a long tail. So the way to determine exactly how long is by holding the yarn at the end of your needle and wrapping the yarn around the amount of times as stitches you're hoping to cast on. So if I want to cast on 10 stitches, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my needle 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hi, Clinton Hill. Eight, nine, 10. I like to give myself a little security. Knitters always want more, not less. And then about where I'm pinching is where I want to put my slip knot. Now, let's say I was casting on 20 stitches. I wouldn't have to sit and wrap this 20 times. I would maybe do 10, double it, and then that's about where I'd want to put my, cast, uh, my slip knot. So tons of ways to make a slip knot. My favorite is just by giving it a little twist. So I like to think of this as a balloon with two legs. And I take the working yarn, which is the side of the yarn attached to my ball of yarn. I just push it through the loop to make a new loop, pull down on the two legs, and then I have my slip knot. It's called a slip knot because if I pull the two legs apart, the knot will slip out. But it's perfect because it can be adjusted whether I'm working on a very tiny needle, like let's say I'm working on this 13, which isn't a tiny needle at all. The slip knot works there, or I can pull it nice and big to fit it on my size 50 needle. <laughs> now for the long tail cast on, I wanna make sure that my tail is closer to my body. Uh, so there we go. And I hold my needle in my right hand with the tapered edge facing to the left. And now I'm gonna hold both of the legs with my left fist, take my thumb and my pointer finger, and I like to make a crab claw. Now you can always just remind yourself to touch it against the end of the needle. That's helpful to make sure you're entering the yarn and parting the curtain from the right place. I then point the needle towards the ceiling and uh, towards my face to make this little slingshot abstract heart. This is the starting position for the long tail cast on. And from here, you're gonna do this nice figure eight motion in towards yourself. So I have my fist, I make my crab claw, touch the point to check it, open the curtain, point it to the ceiling, and now I'm ready to whoops, do my cast on. I'm gonna scrape this piece of yarn off the outside of my thumb, snag this piece of yarn off my pointer finger from the outside, and then bring it through the gap I made on my thumb. Release my thumb, pull it onto the needle. I now have two stitches on my needle. So I'm gonna keep doing that, and. 
Haley, can you uh, show us some of the things we might do with the long tail cast on? Yeah, totally. So one of the reasons why we use the long tail tail cast on is because it creates a really um, pretty braid and also a very secure braid. Sometimes cast on, um, like if you're just looping it on, it's not that secure. And uh, when you finish the product, it just doesn't create um, as clean as a line and a finish as we at Third Piece like to do it with. Um, we use it for almost everything with the exceptions of some of our hats. You'll learn it in our Learn to Knit class where we make this headband. Um, we also use it on almost all of our garments. Um, one of our garments that we use as we're going into the spring is this Piper. So it's this really cute tank. Um, and we cast it on with the long tail, rib, and then stocking it all the way up front and back. Um, so you can see yeah. there, right? You get a really pretty braid. It's super secure, it's super elastic, it's super versatile. There really isn't a knitting project where the long tail cast on wouldn't be an acceptable option. Totally. It's always, even sometimes when I'm making other people's patterns, I just do the long tail cast on because that's what like feels right for me. High like, hidden jewels. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's great. And then you have all this tail left over, which uh, I like to save because I love using the tail to seam up projects at the end. Totally. Um, we have a great video on our YouTube page also explaining the long tail cast on, but um, yeah. That's probably, this is the first cast on we teach all of our new knitters, and it's also the most versatile, in my opinion. Um, so hi folks who are joining us. We're talking about cast ons today, and we really encourage that you stick around. We have a really nice discount code coming your way at the end. We're gonna be talking about different patterns today. So there's a little hint, maybe a discount code having <laughs> something to do with patterns. Um, yeah, so there's my long tail cast on, and I can just, start knitting off the long tail cast on. The big thing to watch out for is that you don't start knitting with the tail. That is the toughest thing yeah. about a long tail cast on. I know it went well because my tail and my working yarn are at the same point at the tip of my needle. But now I just wanna make sure my tail is doing its thing and I'm knitting with my working yarn. And you're good to go. What do you think, Haley? I love it. So Haley, do you wanna show us the crochet cast on? Yes. So the next um, stitch I'm going to show you, we're going to show you guys, is a crochet cast on. This is one of my favorite cast on. Um, it just feels a little different and um, it looks really pretty. So where the long tail cast on creates a braid, the um, what am I saying? The crochet cast on. Sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> the crochet right. cast on creates a braid as well, but it's like a thick kind of like blown up braid and um, it creates a really pretty detail. So okay. for this, I'm going to put my camera down for you guys. You're going to need a crochet hook. This is my sister. She bar let me borrow one time. And I'm just going to use this double pointed needle. So like Alex showed you on the um, long tail, you need to make your slip knot. And then instead of putting, putting it on your needle, you actually put it on your crochet hook to start. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about a tail here. Mine's a little bit long, but um, if it's shorter, then that's fine too, because we're actually not working with the tail since this is a long tail cast. I mean, a crochet cast on. Oops, my camera's going down. Sorry. <laughs> Why? Okay. Hold on. You're all good. So while you get all set up. Okay, so. Oh, oh, you're good to go. I am good to go, yep. Yeah. So the first step is going to be, um, I like to cross my crochet cast, my crochet hook and my needle, and the yarn should be in the back. So the yarn that you're going to use to create the stitch will be in the back. Awesome. I like Haley, to, can I'm moving it a little bit uh, to your oh, right? Oh, yep, thank you. Hold on one sec. You're good. Amy's calling you out. She, I don't know if you just saw. I can't, I, I can't see because I didn't have the, all right, let's try. Amy's discovering where her crochet hook went, so she's a little. <laughs> Whatever. That's what sisters are for. We share. Um, okay, so the yarn comes around the back of the needle. I like to hold the um, yarn with my pointer finger just to give it a little bit of tension. You hook it onto the, cro the crochet hook, and then you start to pull. Right when the crochet hook and the needle crosses, this is where I like to rotate my crochet hook down and pull through. So that just created a loop onto my needle. So now I take my working yarn, I move it to the back, I set back up in this little T shape. 
I put the yarn in between the needle and the crochet hook. That's super important. If you bring it down around this way, you're going to get like a box stitch. So you always want it to be crossed in between these um, crochet hook and needle. And then you're going to take it, pull your crochet hook down, twist, and back up. Nice. I it can be a little like to... tricky to start, yeah. but once you get going, it's really fun. So I'll keep doing this while Alex tells you about a few different things we use it for. Yeah, I like to think of the crochet cast on as like the letter H and then the letter T and then the letter H and then the letter T. Yeah. yeah. So the crochet cast on is perfect for any project with an exposed edge. So we love to use it on our hats. So you can see here on our Fenway hat, it makes a really beautiful exposed edge, something that's going to be a little more decorative when you're going to see it like featured on your forehead. You know, when something is at the bottom of your garment, that's not necessarily where you're trying to call attention to, but there's something really nice about the flexibility and the versatility of a crochet cast on. I do want to say that the size crochet hook you're working on does matter. You can't just use like if Haley was on a, a very tiny needle, like a size four needle, that crochet hook would not fly, right? So crochet hooks, just like needles, come in different gauges. Just uh, keep that in mind as you're doing your crochet cast songs. Next Friday, we're doing a whole workshop about different needle sizes and different tools that you might use in knitting. So a little preview of that. Here's our okay. Namco hat, which also has a beautiful crochet cast on exposed edge. Awesome. Nice. Um, so just one more thing on the crochet cast on, depending on what the pattern calls for, let's say it calls for 10 stitches. Mm -hmm. The stitch that's on the crochet hook counts as your 10th stitch. So let's say you get to nine stitches on your needle, then you take your crochet hook off and you pop it on and then you're good to go. And you can see like how pretty that braid is. It's nice yeah. and even. And then again, you would start knitting from the side with the working yarn. The tail yep. is there to help you later. Awesome. So the crochet cast on is also something you can use as what's called a provisional cast on. So provisional cast ons are designed to be removed later. That's the point of the cast on. So we uh, like to use our provisional cast on for a few of our pieces, like our Westchester headband and our Nantucket. These, uh, the provisional cast on allows you to have a live row of stitches on your cast on edge. So on a piece like a headband, it creates an opportunity for you to Kitchener stitch or do a seam yeah. um, binding against the edge. This can create a really beautiful and kind of flawless line that is a little less bulky than a traditional seam. And it's particularly helpful on a piece like the Nantucket where there's going to be some lacy openness to it. Yeah. So, uh, the wouldn't the lacy openness wouldn't read as clearly if we had done a traditional whip stitch seam or even one of our mattress stitch seams. So to do your provisional cast on, you need your needle. You need a corresponding, isn't it beautiful, Amy? A needle, a corresponding crochet hook. And then you actually need some scrap yarn. And the scrap yarn should be the same weight as the yarn you're working with. And it's really helpful if it's a different color. So uh, let's say I'm working with our Periwinkle and Soft Chunky today. I'm going to use our Spruce in Soft Chunky to create my provisional cast on. So like everything else, it starts with our little slip knot, twist, pull. And again, you don't need to worry about how long the tail is. I'm going to put it on my giant crochet hook, which corresponds with my giant needle. And I want to make sure, unlike the long tail cast on, like Haley was saying, that the um, the working yarn is closer to me. So I'm just going to slip that off, turn it around. Hey, Hi, Dylan. And then I'm here with same motion that Haley was just showing. Letter H, letter T. I grab it from underneath. I pull it through the loop, parallel, wrap it around. You're looking at it from the back here, but I go H, T, pull it through the loop. Give it a little twist at the end as I pull it through. We have a great YouTube video all about the crochet cast on. So to make it a provisional cast on, you would just do that with a piece of scrap yarn. So let's say I'm only knitting five stitches today. Bum, bum, bum. Those needles are three, so, four. so big. 
<laughs> I know, it's so funny. And then the fifth one goes on the end of my needle off the crochet hook. And then I have my five crochet cast on stitches. Now, the, uh, the spruce was really helpful for me, but I'm actually gonna start knitting with the periwinkle. So I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of a tail so that I have something to play with later. And I'm just gonna knit into that first stitch. But instead of throwing the working yarn off of the cast on, I'm going to throw this other yarn right in between. Knit it through. That first stitch might be kind of loose. Don't worry about it. You'll be able to fix it later when you see. Then I'm just gonna keep working all the stitches down my crochet cast on row, down my provisional cast on. Dun dun. And Alex, yep. something to note too. So for the Nantucket, it starts off with, uh, I think the first row is knitting yarn overs and purling to kind of create that lacy stitch. And with the provisional cast on, you get right into what the pattern calls for. Right. You don't do a setup row. Some, some patterns might call for, but I think um, most of our patterns will just get right into the pattern and no setup row. Absolutely. And the Westchester is one of our patterns that does call for a setup row. So kind of like Rachel Ray, I pre-baked this in the oven. So I would keep working the, uh, this pattern until it was um, done, until I had the length that I wanted for my headband. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about uh, removing uh, the provisional cast on. So you can see I'm working with our eucalyptus, but I have wisteria here as my provisional cast on. So I'm just going to very gently do the unthinkable, which <laughs> is pull out do this row of stitches. Or this this part is very row. intimidating. Yeah, this part, I'm scared to do it live on camera. Yeah, don't so, mess up. I won't. Well, I mean, you only this have is one mine. shot. So I'm already starting to see where my first do, 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 do where my first stitch intersects. And this is why using a contrasting color is so important. I'm starting to see where my first stitch intersects with the cast on. And I wanna just gently pull that out. And this works really well with our merino wool because it's so fine, it holds its structure really beautifully. And it really feels like I'm doing a puzzle. <laughs> I'm unwinding, all right. So you can see here, I have my first stitch I'm going to pick it up on an extra needle and pull it and out. And now just I Just for everyone who keeps joining in, we're showing the provisional cast on right now. Yep. Um, and how to take off the provisional cast on other yarn. And if you stick around until the end of this video, we have a special treat for you guys. So just wanted to throw that out there. Yes. So awesome. So now I'm just going to gently work my way through removing the scrap yarn, just following the pattern, pulling it out, and whenever a loop reveals itself, I pick it up with my extra needle. So in the end, I'll have live stitches on either side of my piece, which I can then use to either do a three needle bind off or a Kitchener stitch. Oh yeah.